said, you know, the idea, the, the, the main ideas that I think that I'd like to, you know, people to leave with is that, you know, it is just critically important to have uh, someone involved at the trial level uh, with a knowledge of appellate law, um, especially in anything, you know, any sort of litigation of consequence, because the rules of preserving issues are, you know, are very, in some ways, arcane, can be complex and are much more complex than would seem to be at first blush. So being there in order to help make sure that things are framed correctly, that if there's a trial that the issues are being, you know, objected to or offers of proof are being made and, you know, proper post-trial motions are being made and basically that everything is being preserved for the appeal because nothing is worse uh, or more, you know, is, is, is sadder than getting to, you know, ha having what could have been good issues on appeal, uh, but they had been waived by not having been asserted properly below. So, you know, and once you're in the court of appeal, the, the record is closed and, and that's it. So it really is just absolutely critical to make sure that issues are preserved properly in the trial and district courts. Um, you know, even if not going to trial, even if you're just talking about, um, you know, dispositive motion practice. So that's just something that I would uh, have folks uh, take away from this. Thank you so much, Glenn. Mark, a couple of takeaways from yourself as well. Uh, well, for, my first takeaway would be to second what Glenn just said, and that's not just for uh, for for self preservation as as appellate litigators, but but it's really true. I mean, that's it's such a fundamental uh, point, uh, and that and that. In, in a way, bleeds into what I was saying about about you know thinking carefully about what the standards of review are, and that's not really just at the appellate level, but that also might affect your strategy even at the trial level, mm -hmm. and understanding how things are going to be viewed. How is this going to be viewed when we go up, and how we might craft our argument or our or our uh, discovery or our, um, our our trial strategy in light of what's what's going to be the standard of review? What things do we need in the record that might impact the standard of review going, going up? Uh, you know, one example is on this administrative point. Do we need to have that in the record? If so, do we need to have the basis for it? Do we need to make sure that it's a formal or informal? Uh, do, do I need to be able to explain what it is? That might, that might need to come in at times, sometimes you can take judicial notice of those things and 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 maintain your the standard you're fighting for. Other times, you might need to have it in the record. And so, uh, you know, all of these things hang together in in just thinking deeply. And that's you know, the, the, one of Glenn's kind of the the, the presupposition of what, what he's saying there is it's very difficult when you are the our trial counsel and you are deep in the weeds and you're making split second decisions at trial. And you're moving very quickly, and you, you it's it's difficult to be able to float out to that ten thousand foot uh, view, and that's what ideally the uh, appellate lawyers try to do. And so, even if you don't have one that there, you have to try to do that to the extent possible, so you can keep these larger points in view. 